with the mic cable? <laughs> I think we forgot one of the important elements. No pun intended. <laughs> Hey fellas, how are we doing tonight? Uh, my name is Roy, uh, Roy G. Biv. The G stands for Gary. And um, I like colors, but there's a problem with colors. They don't make sound. And as much as I love light and colors, I also love sound and music. So what if there was a way to turn light into sound? Well, it might actually not be that crazy of, of an idea, because light and sound are both waves. The trouble, though, is that the frequency of light waves are way too fast for us to hear, and that makes me really sad. But what if there was a way to turn the frequencies of light into music that we could hear? Well, it turns out there's actually a scientific instrument that does exactly this, and I happen to have one with me. <laughs> now, this device, this device scales the frequencies of visible light, which we see as different colors, into musical pitches that we see, that we hear as different musical notes. So if I start from red light, which has the lowest frequency, and go to violet light, which has the highest frequency, we can hear the pitch of the notes increase. Splendid. Now, another cool thing about the spectrum of visible light is that violet light is roughly double the frequency of red light. And in music, one doubling of frequency corresponds to an octave, or this interval. So that means that these kids' toys, um, these rainbow xylophones, as long as they go from red to violet within the span of an octave, are actually a physically accurate mapping of the visible light spectrum onto musical notes, which I think is just marvelous. And this mapping allows us to convert a series of colors into a melody. So here's a random sequence of colors that I came up with, and it actually makes this melody. Seems some of you guys may recognize that melody. It's by Beethoven. Um, and, you know, so we can, we can create, like, any melody we, we want with these. We, there's really infinite possibilities. Mr. Biff, I have a question. Oh, uh, yes, yes, Kylie, go ahead. And please, call me Roy. Mr. Biff is my father's name. Okay, Roy, well, I was wondering... Hey, uh, Mr. Roy, I also had a oh, question. Hold, hold on, Evan. Let's let Kylie ask her question first. Okay, she raised her hand first. Um, sorry, Kylie, what were you saying? Well... All the stuff about hearing light is cool, but what does any of this have to do with chemistry? Oh, that's, that's a wonderful question, Kylie. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, so I've been talking about light for who knows how long, and this, this idea of hearing, you know, this, this is all building towards hearing the elements and what do they sound like. And the elements actually make light. And in order to explain how they make light, I'm going to enlist the help of a good friend uh, who some of you may remember, Spectroscopy Steve. Um, so spec Spectroscopy Steve is back from a vacation in New Mexico where he was up to some fun experiments with helium. He built this device called a cathode ray tube by filling a tube with helium gas and running an electric current through it. Uh, Steve, could you show us what you made? <laughs> Thanks, Steve. So when Steve passes electricity through this helium, it, the helium absorbs energy and then it releases that energy as light. And this is actually the same technology that uh, lights up those signs outside of restaurants. Wait, like the ones outside of pizza places? Yes, Kylie, exactly. And that's actually a really good segue into explaining how helium produces this light, because in a lot of ways, a helium atom is kind of like a pizza. You've got your positively charged nucleus in the middle and your negative electrons around it. And these electrons like to stay really close to the nucleus in the lowest energy level. That's where they're most stable. But when Steve adds energy in the form of electricity, he can, add, he can cause one of the electrons to absorb energy and go into a higher energy level. And it might chill, chill out here for a while, but eventually it's going to want to relax down to the lower energy state. And the cool part is that when it does this, it releases that energy as light that we can see. And this is... <laughs> This is exactly how those neon signs outside of pizza places work. In fact, neon is just another uh, gas just like helium. Wow, that's so cool! Mmm, pizza. Ugh, did you even listen to anything he said? Yeah, he was talking about the electrons and the pepperonis and the barbecue chicken and the sauce. And... Man, I am hungry. D do you want to go to lunch? Okay, I feel like I lost you guys a little bit with the pizza thing, so let's connect this back to sound, right? So we know how to turn light into sound, and now we know that elements make light, 
So what if we turn an element's light into sound? So here's that glowing helium tube, and this is what it sounds like. It's kind of pretty, right? Wait, why are we hearing multiple notes? I only see one color, so shouldn't we only hear one frequency? That's an excellent question, Kylie. Actually, this single sort of violet-y color that we see is actually the result of all of the individual frequencies that helium emits blending together into a coherent color. And we could actually break this down and listen to each of these lines individually as a melody. And these are the seven discrete lines that helium emits in the visible spectrum, but we could also listen to other elements. So, for example, hydrogen only has four prominent lines in the visible spectrum, so it makes, it makes a much simpler chord. Oxygen, on the other hand, has a few more notes, about 187, so it sounds a little bit messier and kind of noisier. with more than one element. I know that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen, so if we combine the sound of hydrogen with oxygen, is this what water sounds like? You know, Kylie, that's a really excellent idea, but actually when we mix elements together, they actually form chemical bonds and share their electrons, so the spectra completely change, and really things get way more complicated, and that's a topic for another day. Hmm, okay. Well, what if both elements in the molecule are the same? Like, what does it sound like when two helium atoms come together to form a bond? Well, helium is, is kind of a bit different. It actually doesn't really form chemical bonds. It, it really just likes to hang out. It's a, it's a noble gas, so, which means that it really just likes to you know, be alone, hang out like it is. Doesn't helium get lonely all by itself? Well, just because helium doesn't form chemical bonds in the same way that other elements do, it doesn't mean it gets lonely. I mean, helium atoms like to hang out in groups all the time, and sometimes they even have helium dance parties. What's a helium dance party? Oh, Kylie, you've, you've never been to a helium dance party? Oh, man, oh they're, they're really something. I, that's, that's a shame. Well, actually, I, I think there's one going on right now. We should, here, here, let me show you, but fair warning, you should buckle your seatbelts because things are about to get elemental. <laughs> Hit it.
Nitrogen Store.